Good day everybody. Welcome to Wilderness Flash Events. In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get through these, survive the craziness that is these events, and of course uh, make sure that you get all the rewards that you're after. Uh, at the time of this recording it's been less than a week since release of these events and that has been plenty of time to get the hang of things, uh, smooth out kinks and how you go about this and uh, yeah, it's just chaos. Um, I don't know if the number of players participating in these will go down over time, but right now it is totally nuts. So uh, I'm going to give general advice. I'm going to talk specifically about each event and how to uh, complete it and all the mechanics involved and all that. But uh, really, once you get used to this, all the events are pretty similar. It's either combat or gathering, and then there's a few special ones. Uh, but I want to start first with my overall impressions after doing uh, all of these events at least once. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. I think this update is... Uh, a really good addition to the game. There are a lot of players complaining that um, they're not getting the KBD pet every kill or whatever, or the rewards aren't worth the time. Uh, and this is probably true if you're already maxed and already have maxed cash times 20 or whatever. But for, let's say, an iron account like this, or uh, players that aren't maxed yet, or players that are just looking for something a little bit different, uh, these are pretty great events. The time investment is pretty low. Um, it's the only event in recent RuneScape history I can think of that puts hundreds of players together for a co like combat purposes or just gathering purposes. And because it's in the wilderness and all the wilderness mechanics still apply, like the volcano strikes and the ambushes, um, it adds interesting complexity and difficulty to the game without making it unsurvivable, if that makes sense. So. Anyways, that's my two cents. This is a great update, even if all the rewards aren't super amazing. You get experience rewards for every event. And if you still care about that because you're not maxed yet, they are it's actually a pretty good experience for the amount of time invested. So now I want to jump into general advice for all the events. Uh, there are a few things, like a few little concepts that apply to everything. The very first one I want to mention is make sure that you have a very stable connection and avoid doing this for the time being at least on mobile. Uh, at least Android mobile crashes very often uh, when you're walking through the wilderness or Edgeville and if you disconnect during one of these events you will lose all your progress and that very likely means that you will fail the event because you won't have enough time to uh, gather everything or do enough DP damage. So definitely make sure not to disconnect and avoid mobile for now <laughs> if you want to actually complete these. Uh, in my previous video that I published before this, I noted one important thing, which was uh, having summoning familiars that are interactable. So uh, in that recording, um, everybody was getting really pissed at one person for having a yak that everybody was clicking on instead of clicking on like the gathering nodes or attacking the enemies or whatnot. Uh, that's very irritating. So since then, I've noticed other people have combat familiars, and I think the deal is that as long as they're not interactable, you're fine. So just if you're going to bring familiars, definitely make sure that you have the um, interactable settings. I don't remember what they're called. Make sure you turn that off so other players don't try to attack your familiar and fail at the event. The next piece of advice I have for all events is to get there on time. In fact, be there about a minute beforehand. Uh, this is easy if you've done each of the events at least once and you get the achievement that lets you teleport to the events. Um, but the reason I say that, especially for the combat events, is that they go by quickly. Um, again, I don't know if this... Uh, the amount of players participating in these will diminish over time. But the combat events in particular are over very quickly. And there is right now a 70,000 damage uh, minimum that you need to deal in order to get rewards. Uh, likewise, with gathering events, you need to gather a certain amount of resources and hand them in in order to be eligible for the Wildly Sack or for the special events, the Very Wildly Sack or whatever it's called. The DPS is especially an issue for lower level players, or I've seen players with like Sun Spear level gear having a hard time hitting the 70,000 cap before um, the event is over because all the other players have killed everything. If you're struggling, just um, really bring your, bring your best DPS gear. Use prayers, use supersets, uh, apparently cannons work, and that can really help out your damage. So if you're struggling, you can just find ways to make your DPS a little bit better, but mainly get there early and in the craziness of a mob, especially in combat, uh, what I do is I remove myself from the crowd a little bit so it's easier to tell what I'm doing and if I'm getting hit. And I also am just constantly scanning with my mouse for whichever mob or enemy has the highest HP. Uh, because they have pretty high HP when they spawn, but because of the number of players, they die very quickly. So 
It could be that you're attacking something, but it died, and you won't even notice because of everything going on. So I am constantly retargeting to whatever enemy I can find with the highest HP, just to make sure that I'm always attacking and always doing the most damage possible. So that's the best advice I can offer there. The last piece of general advice I have is be minimal in your inventory. Um, you shouldn't need too much food for these events, even if you're lower level. Uh, for the gathering events, you don't need anything. Uh, just you know, in case you get ambushed, have some backup food. But Maybe like five pieces of good food is fine because especially for the gathering events you'll want as much free inventory space as possible so you can gather as much as you can before delivering uh, the whatever supplies you gathered. There are a total of 10 events, a mix between gathering and combat, and then there are also on top of that three special events. So the 10 regular events will reward you with a wild sack, which has more common rewards. That does include the obelisk shards that let you teleport to the obelisk, and the obelisk pyramid, whatever, prism, um, I'll look up the name, sorry, that is a permanent uh, teleport to all the obelisks. So uh, a lot of players avoid the regular events because the rewards in the regular wildy sack aren't very good, but remember that you can get the prism with the infinite obelisk teleports. The three special events, which are the King Black Dragon, um, the Infernal Star, and... The evil tree, the bloodwood tree, sorry. Those reward uh, not only at least one wildy sack, but also one very wildy sack. And that has more rare rewards like dragon rider, boots and gloves, uh, unchecked black dragon eggs, along with uh, apparently the tier 87 wilderness weapons uh, and other goodies that I'll put on screen here. So uh, brawling gro gloves as well is an important one to mention. Uh, so they are very rare rewards, but they are worth doing, and also the common drops from those uh, sacks are better. <laughs> those bags, whatever. So let's get into the specific events. Uh, let me go over the gathering events first, first since they're all pretty similar. Uh, the first possible one is the Butterfly Swarm. Um, you know what, I'll go over a bunch of the call kind of all at once because the mechanics are similar, but here's the deal. The Butterfly Swarm uh, always happens in the same place because all events always happen in the same place. The butterfly event happens near the obelisk that is south of the wilderness lodestone. The idea here is to capture magical butterflies and hand them one at a time of course and hand them into uh, the person that's collecting them. They'll have an icon over their head. All the gathering event uh, NPCs will have an icon overhead that looks like tutorial person icons. You gather as much as you can and hand them into them. Uh, make sure you look at the minimum personal requ amount required to get the reward. Uh, with these butterflies specifically, make sure you only capture magical ones and avoid the poison butterflies because those will damage you instead of giving you anything good. Another possible gathering event is called Displaced Energy. This is basically where you harvest from wisps, and it's the same thing as the butterflies really. There are wisps around the area, you harvest from them one at a time and hand them into the collection person. Now here there is also sort of a poison variant, just like the poison butterflies, but I I could be wrong here, but from what I saw, the poison variants look the same as the regular ones, so you could be collecting a lost wisp and it'll actually be poisonous or whatever and just explode and damage you. I don't know how to avoid this because from what I saw they look the same. Um, somebody might have a comment on that. If you do know a way to differentiate them, please leave one below. And this event happens to the west of the Dark Warriors Fortress, right on the edge of the wilderness by Trollheim. The unnatural outcrop gathering event is even simpler than all the other ones. It happens right by the Mage of Zamorak, where you go to the, uh, where you enter the abyss to make Renaissance. Um, it's described as the mouth of the river Lum, so just north of Edgeville. Uh, this one is simple. There's no poison rocks or explosive rocks or anything that hurts you really. Um, you just mine the ore and hand them into the dude. It's the easiest gathering event, I think. The last gathering event possible is the is called Surprising Seedlings. This one happens just south of Butterflies, so near the Wilderness Lodestone, just south of the Teleportation Obelisk there. Uh, in this event, it's gathering, but it's a little bit different. So there are, from what I've seen, three little plants that you need to nurture one at a time. Uh, they will eventually grow, or they will shortly grow, into flowers that can be harvested. There is also a possibility here for them to be poison variants, and if that's the case, you can right-click and choose to dig them up. Otherwise, just click to harvest them and hand them in as you go. And make sure you... Well, this one takes a little bit of, a, of time. Uh, make sure that you are running around and nurturing these plants constantly, so don't leave any of them idle for too long, because they do take time to grow.
Now we can transition to combat events, um, and I'll use this Lost Souls event to describe it because this one is actually a mix between combat or gathering in that you have a choice between the two. Uh, so the Lost Souls event takes place in the cemetery called the Forgotten Cemetery, and basically there are ghosts that appear. You can click on them to harvest ectoplasm from them. There are also these like phantasmal guardians that spawn, and they're aggressive you can kill them and as long as you have done some damage to them uh, when they die they will explode or whatever and give you three ectoplasms so it's generally faster to seek them out and fight them for ectoplasm since you get three at a time and they die pretty quickly if there are a lot of players in the area uh, if there are none available obviously just harvest from the ghosts but uh, generally speaking bring combat gear for this event because uh, yeah killing those guardians is a faster way to get ectoplasm and then, just like all the other gathering events, you hand them in to the person receiving the ectoplasm there, or the skeleton in this case. The other combat events are more or less identical. Uh, there's a demon spawn, which takes, pl takes place in the Wilderness Crater by the Sword of Edicts on the western side. Uh, demon spawn, do 70,000 damage at least, and then the event is over when they're all dead. Or uh, not when time runs I was going to say when time runs out, but really, if that happens, any event fails. So, yeah. <laughs> the event's over when they're all dead, make sure you do 70,000 damage. Uh, another combat event is the Hellhound pack. This one also spawns west of the Dark Warriors Fortress, like the Wisps, or the Mid Displaced Energy. Uh, it's just a bit south of that, actually. Same concept, kill all the Hellhounds, do 70,000 damage. The Ramaki Incursion combat event happens just, out, just outside of Demonheim. It's easiest, probably, if you don't have the teleport to the event unlocked yet, uh, it's easiest probably just to use the Ring of Kinship to teleport to Demonheim, and then go out the gate and they are right out the gate there when you enter the wilderness. And there's also the Spiders combat event, which happens just north of the Varrock Beacon, which actually means uh, close to the Blue Dragons and kind of north of the archaeology site, the Infernal Source. Uh, that is north of Varrock. And lastly, for combat events, there is the Forgotten Souls, which is just forgotten, various forgotten warriors from Demonheim. Uh, they spawn just outside the gates of Demonheim, but to the north a little bit in the open plains. And now we get to the fun part, which is the three special events that give you much better rewards. Uh, two of these are multi-part events, and one, the King Black Dragon, has extra special mechanics. So I'll start with the Bloodwood Tree, which I think is the best one to go to. Uh, especially if you're going for the achievement of doing four of these wilderness events so that you can complete the Civil War II mini quest, uh, definitely do this one if you can first if it happens that way because this counts as three. So the first part of this event that gives you a regular wildly reward sack uh, is nurturing the evil tree. So there are piles of bones on the ground, you just click to uh, auto start auto collecting them once your inventory is full, click one of the bones, it'll grind all of them up at once, and then you click the tree to uh, give them to nurture it, and then rinse and repeat until you have the at least the personal amount of contribution required. Once the tree grows up, uh, it goes evil, of course, so you have to chop it. Uh, this one is easy, you just stand there and chop it. Occasionally branches might stun you and do minor damage, but you can ignore that for the most part. Uh, keep the branches or the kindling or whatever you get in your inventory because you'll need that for the next part. You also get a wildy sack for completing this part, uh, and then you go on to the third part, which is where you finally burn down the tree. So all the kindling that you acquired from chopping it, uh, you can just uh, use by clicking on the tree. It'll contribute all of it. And then to fill up the rest of your quota, you can, uh, well, you need to collect kindling from those little fire wisps floating around. And you just collect a little kindling from there and keep clicking on the tree to apply it until you have at least the personal amount and there you go that's the event for completing the third part you get another wildy sack as well as a very wildy sack the second special event is the uh, infernal star which is similar in concept to a crash star this happens by the Chaos Altar, so just southeast, or rather more east, of the Wilderness Lodestone. The part one is simple, you just mine it, like a Crash Star with other players. There's nothing to collect, nothing to deliver, just mining. Uh, do note, though, that you will need a little bit more food for this event, maybe, because, um, well, A, the next part is a combat event, <laughs> and B, in the first part, as you mine this rock, it heats up and periodically 
splashes out some damage at you. Uh, it can hit pretty hard up to, you know, like in between 1500 and 2000, so make sure you have at least enhanced Excalibur or something, or a little bit of food to offset that. Part 1 is done once it's totally mined, and you get a wildy sack for that, and then you go off to Part 2, uh, which is where a bunch of Pyre Lords, Pyre Fiends, whatever, appear. And then it becomes just a combat event where you need to do 70,000 damage. Nothing particularly special here, um, it's a little bit extra crazy. But um, yeah, it's just a combat event. Complete it, and you'll get another Wildy Sack as well as a very Wildy Sack. Lastly, we have the most fun and interesting event, which is the King Black Dragon appearing. So this fight actually works very similarly to Varak Lith in uh, the Dragonkin Laboratory Elite Dungeon, if you're familiar with that, uh, in that there are a few similar mechanics. And there's also a few mechanics on top of that. So uh, to get started, uh, a, from my experience, you don't need an anti-fire or super anti-fire, I don't think. Um, at least I haven't noticed crazy damage from that. If you do get attacked by the King Black Dragon, he can deal pretty heavy damage. Even with Animate Dead, I was taking about 1800 per hit. Uh, and in my first run here, I got hit a lot. I'm not really sure what happened, because in my next runs with this, I didn't really take any damage at all. It could be because I was standing out of the way, I don't know. But anyways... You deal damage to the king, but note that there are two black dragons with him. Uh, you will, you slash the other players will need to kill these eventually once the king hits a certain health threshold because he will no longer take damage while those dragons are still alive. So what I like to do is just target those side dragons first. Uh, it is worth noting that those black dragons do not count towards the damage quota that you need. Uh, only the king does. The next mechanic that happens is that periodically um, the king will do the same thing that Varak Lift does with those spires where he'll slam down his tail or whatever and multiple spires with a lot of HP will come out of the ground and those need to be destroyed before the king takes any more damage. Um, sometimes, especially if you're in a large group of players, you won't see this very often, but you can be targeted for the spire to come up. If that's the case, it'll hit you for up to like 2000 melee damage, at least in my experience only up to like 2000 melee damage. Um, anyways, if that happens, not a big deal. Just eat and destroy the spires and then start attacking the king again. That's all. Once the two black dragons are dead, the spire mechanic will repeat every so often until uh, the king is finished, and then you will get a wildy sack as well as a very wildy sack for that. So that's the rundown of all the events and everything you need to know to survive them and get rewards from them. Uh, I should probably also mention that these are on a set schedule, and... Uh, they rotate every hour, so at the very beginning of every hour, one of these events occurs. The wiki page for this is very helpful uh, in telling you which events are coming up next, and especially uh, if you want to know when the next special events are, if you're only interested in that. So definitely monitor the wiki page if you're interested in this, and if you're interested in specific events, to know which ones are coming up when, because, yeah, it's easy. The schedule is set. Well, if you made it this far, thank you for watching all the way through. Please do consider liking this video and subscribing. It helps me grow my audience quite a bit. And I hope this helped out some of you. Please definitely let me know your experience uh, with these events in the comments and your thoughts on it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.